giant winter creek chub. Oh my gosh. Welcome everybody to the very first episode in the series called Let's Learn Fish. Now the first fish we're gonna look at is gonna be the creek chub. Now you're saying, Dave, why are we learning about creek chubs? Because it's winter time and they're a winter fish. So let's do it. Hope you enjoy the episode. So as you can see here on the map, we have the geographical range of creek chubs. They're pretty extensive throughout the eastern United States. Uh, they're pretty much found everywhere, uh, east of the Rockies. Uh, they're even found as far as Newfoundland and Canada, uh, all the way down to uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. And there is uh, apparently some remnant populations uh, down in Florida, so they're, they're pretty much everywhere out in the eastern United States. So creek chubs, they require moving water uh, in order to spawn. They can live in stagnant water, but they really need moving water. So things like small streams, creeks, whatever, but also things like agricultural dishes, like you can see here in the video. They also need creeks with like gravel and sand substrates, so basically like uh, rocky, pebbly type environments, because uh, that's how they build their nests and things like that. They don't do really well in super fast moving currents. Uh, they tend to get outcompeted by other species relatively easily. They kind of need like a, a, a mid-tier flow, you know, nothing crazy. Uh, or else they'll just get pushed out by other species and they, they really just can't compete with anything. Okay, so physical description. Uh, here's a picture of a creek chub. And they do vary slightly in, in their coloration and things like that. So, uh, but there are some, some no noticeable things that uh, they really don't deviate from. And that's... Uh, their fins, their fins are pretty much all yellow. Uh, eight to nine dorsal fin rays, seven to nine anal fin rays, 13 to 18 pectoral fin rays, and eight pelvic fin rays. Quite often whenever you're looking at any fish really, uh, it's so much easier to distinguish. Like if there's ever a question of what kind of species it is, really if you just count the fin rays, uh, th that's, that's something they can't change. Color and pigment uh, in the scales, in the skin of the fish, or whatever the case may be, uh, those can vary greatly, but uh, as far as like the fin rays and things like that, those those are pretty standard. They can't, they don't really change those, and they're often misidentified as things like fall fish and uh, other types of minnows, even shiners. Some people confuse them with shiners. And I'll show you a picture of a fall fish right here, and as you can see, the scales on a fall fish are slightly larger and. So, and the coloration's a little different as well. Uh, here's a picture of a shiner. So just so you can see what that is, it's a common shiner. Uh, there's a ton of species of shiner, so I'm not gonna go through them all. So when it comes to spawning, uh, their eggs are pretty much, they're just laid in the nest and neither parent looks after them. So it's, it's basically a fire and forget. Uh, they drop the eggs and then they bounce. Uh, the only reason that a male will stick around is, is in the hopes that another female will actually come along and drop her eggs as well. Creek chubs are quite promiscuous. Females and males in the same year will mate uh, with multiple individuals. Uh, typically this depends on the size of the creek chub. Larger creek chubs tend to spawn more and the females tend to lay a lot more eggs. And one female can lay, a large female can lay up to 4,000 eggs. So uh, still not a tremendous number compared to a lot of other fish species, but that's still quite a few eggs. They're actually born with the yolk sac uh, still attached to them. And it's actually referred to as the prolarval stage. Uh, and then once the yolk sac is consumed uh, by the baby creek chub, uh, it's considered to be in the post-larval stage. And that's when the animal is, is actually starting to forage for itself. And they typically eat small larvae and things of that nature. And once they get to a certain size, they start to eat uh, terrestrial bugs and things of that nature. The entire larval stage lasts about 18 to 27 days. Now, the nests that these males make are abnormally big for the size of fish that they are. Uh, when you look at a creek chub, you know, your average size creek chub's gonna run you know, anywhere from 
you know, five to eight inches. Those are going to be your typical ones you're going to catch. But these nests that these males build, some of them are over 500 centimeters long. That's huge. And if you don't know how big a centimeter is, one centimeter is about 0.4 inches. So it's like half an inch. Uh, so if you do the math, you're talking about like, you know, like 200 inches. Like that's a, that's huge for such a tiny little fish. So the male will guard and occupy the nest. And then basically what he's doing is he's just fending off rival males. And it's really interesting. If one male challenges another male uh, for his nest, they engage in a ritual basically called deferred combat. And what this is, is if you've ever been to a junior high lunchroom, you've seen this happen. The two males just basically size each other up. They come close to each other. They kind of do a little dance and yada, yada, yada. And basically, there's, it's basically just a huffing and puffing match. There's not a lot of physical altercation there. Traditionally, the larger, more aggressive male, he's going to win. He's going to settle back down to his nest or he's going to take it over, whatever the case may be. And that's how that is settled. And there's a really interesting ritual that takes place between a male and a female. Um, the female will actually come in on a male's nest. And basically, females are just coming by and checking out the nest. And at this point, it's kind of a fine line because the female can then flee she can become intimidated by the male and just leave, in which case he will go after her, but uh, obviously he's not going to get too far away from his nest, so uh, it's going to just wait for another female. They typically reach sexual maturity at about three years, both, both sexes. Uh, however, some of the females can reach it after about one year. So like I said, Creek Chubs breed once a year, typically in around... Uh, anywhere from late April to May and some places they do it a little bit later especially when you get up in the northern states they start to get into July and they're still spawning and mating takes place for about two weeks out of the year. Typical creek chubs live to be about four or five years old. Uh, some individuals can live as long as eight years. Interesting behavior about creek chubs they are a diurnal species meaning that they live their lives predominantly during the daytime. They feed during the daytime uh, typically after water temperatures warm up. So juvenile creek chubs tend to school up and not just with other creek chubs. They will school up with anything that lives in the water with them. So we're talking shiners, daces, pretty much anything, any kind of minnow species uh, that all hang out together. But typically anything that's over, really over an inch long, at that point they, they stop schooling together and they pretty much kind of do their own thing because they're a highly aggressive species and they, they really rely on their ability to find food. And when you're in a giant group, uh, food is limited and you really don't have a choice. So you got to get away from everybody else. And that's typically what happens with creek chubs. They're hyper aggressive species. And I know this from experience. These things can absolutely go into a feeding frenzy. Typically, if anything hits the water, uh, you'll see a lot of them just absolutely dart to it, no matter what it is. Like it's just a reflex for them. And during the colder months, things like times like right now, uh, creek chubs definitely they start to winter in deep pools and runs and things like that. The home range of a creek chub is actually kind of surprising. They can travel distances typically 130 to 195 meters, but sometimes they've been known to go as far as 600 meters. So I mean, if you're fishing a creek, I mean 600 meters that's that's quite a ways. Uh, that they can uh, move away from where they're from. Creek chubs can be ravenous carnivores. Uh, they have a highly adaptable diet. They can eat anything from uh, terrestrial bugs to other fish, including smaller creek chubs. Um, but they'll eat amphibians, crayfish, mollusks, pretty much anything that they can fit in their mouths and anything that they can kill and pick apart. Uh, I've actually done this before. Some of the biggest creek chubs I've ever caught, I caught on cut shiners uh, i was actually fishing for bullheads at the time and hoping to just give them something different and i ended up catching several creek chubs that were in like the nine to ten inch range so some really big creek chubs uh, as far as predation goes pretty much everything is carnivorous it lives in the water anywhere around these things it lives in the same watersheds as these things eats them uh, creek chubs have really soft bodies they have very few natural defenses uh, one of the nicknames for them, for example, is flathead candy. Uh, they, but really, everything loves to eat creek chubs. So they've kind of got the short end of the stick. But typically in the creeks and things that they're found, they're quite often the top predator. Now, I know I have several different creeks that I catch them out of, and it's really interesting to see how they behave uh, when they've got sunfish around them and when it's predominantly a creek chub creek. Uh, so, you know, like 
one of the ones that you guys see me fish a lot. Uh, it, it is a, I, I actually just call it Chub Creek. But uh, yeah, it, it is predominantly creek chubs. And it's really interesting the difference between the way those creek chubs behave and creek chubs that exist in the other two creeks that I fish. The creek chubs in the other two creeks tend to be a lot more shy. And uh, you, can, you can just really tell that uh, they're not the big dog on the block when it comes to those other creeks uh, because there's a lot more sunfish and there are other species such as bullheads in there as well. So you can tell that creek chubs can be absolutely hyper aggressive carnivores and really take over a creek. But when there's other big dogs around, they really take a back seat. As far as the conservation and the law is concerned with these fish, uh, they're classified as what's called a rough fish, uh, so there really is virtually no regulation on them. They're, they're the only regulation that applies in, in virtually any of the states that they exist is the wanton waste laws. So you can't, you know, just, but that's a true with all wildlife. You can't just, like, catch them and throw them up on the bank and waste them. Uh, but other than that, you can use them for pretty much anything you want, and you can take as many as you want, and there's no restrictions on anything. So a few things to take note of in my experiences with creek chubs is that they very rarely bite before 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. Typically these are a, an afternoon fish if I'm going to go after them and catch them for bait. These fish are hyper aggressive usually anywhere from on a sunny day from 2 p.m. to about 5 to 6 p.m. Uh, if it's in the dead of summer and you have a long day maybe 7 o'clock but typically what happens with these fish is they're, they're really hardwired into predation. And so when those bigger fish start to move, uh, these things, they really go and they hide away and you can't really find them. There will be a link in the description for all my sources. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. I plan to do a lot more of these. So if you would, go ahead and leave a comment. Tell me what fish you want me to do next and I will do it for you guys literally any kind of fish preferably the ones that live typically in the midwest area so pretty much everything east of the colorado rockies uh, all the way to the coastline so again thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one